Good morning. Welcome to Southside Baptist Church and our Sunday School lesson for this week. Um, it's good to be back with you all, and I hope that you will enjoy today's lesson. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to tell you uh, the title of our lesson. It's called We Support One Another. And if you want to follow along in the scripture, we're going to be in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. And we're going to be starting with verse 1. All right, guys, before we get started, let's have a moment of prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for the many blessings that you've given us. We're thankful that you've given us time to come together, Lord, and to look at your scripture and your word and to study the meaning of what it means to support one another, Lord. Um, as we pray, Lord, we know there are a lot of people that are hurting in different ways. We know there are people that have health problems. We know that there are people that have physical problems besides just their health. Lord, there are people with financial uh, problems right now. Our country, Lord, is struggling in a, min in a major way through this uh, virus that's with us still. And Lord, this morning we ask that above all things, Heavenly Father, you will touch those that need a special touch from you in whatever way it is. And Heavenly Father, if it be your will, we especially ask that you will um, cause this virus to come to an end. Lord, just take it completely away from us. We know there's a reason for it, Lord, and hopefully um, your people have realized that and they're coming back to you in a powerful way and praying and studying. And um, Lord, as this lesson says, becoming more of a support for one another. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for our church, family, Lord. And again, we thank you for this time that we have to come together. Lord, please be with us. Please be with those at home, um, Lord, that are listening to the lesson this morning. We just are thankful, Lord. Just thankful for all the many blessings that you did give us. We ask that you to be, be with us in a special way, Lord. In your precious name I pray. Amen. So again, the title of our lesson uh, today is called We Support One Another. And the first question, of course, that um, it asks, it's got a picture in the book of a house being worked on. Um, it could be one of the Habitat for Humanity homes. Uh, could be just a mission group that's gone and they're working on a home that needs some, some uh, assistance. But there's people on the roof, there's people on ladders, there's people um, working on the doors, the windows, the floors, the front porch. And I think of um, when has being part of a group helped you accomplish something big? Well, any time from the time that you're a child, um, a teenager even, a young adult, any time that you participate in something and you're part of a group, you have seen the results of what happens whenever uh, you all work together. Um, it just goes better. Uh, things you can accomplish more uh, in the end except um, I think of whenever I was working on my house not long ago and I had a friend come and help me even though it was just the two of us we still got a whole lot more accomplished um, because she was there to help and guide me because I don't know how to paint as, as well as she does um, so when you think about supporting one another, the focus point of this week's lesson is God gives the church spiritual gifts to accomplish his work. I've heard many people throughout the years uh, say, well, I don't have a spiritual gift. I, I can't do anything special. Well, sometimes it's not a gift like the preacher has. It's not a gift like your Sunday school teacher has. Um, it's not even a gift sometimes that you, um, that is seen. There are people that have gifts that aren't necessarily seen and thought of as having gifts. So let's take time to look at this lesson and see just where your gift might be and how we can use that gift to support our church. The lesson writer uh, starts off the lesson by saying when we come to Christ, we don't come to him alone. We are joined with other believers in his church. Our individual lives and relationship with Christ are not just about me, they're about we. We must leave individualism at the door when joining Christ's church. Why? 
because God saves us not only for our own benefit, but also to bless and support others, especially fellow Christians. And I remember something being said several times. I was in band whenever I was in um, high school. And uh, of course we traveled around football games and competitions and things like that. And there were people that would always say, there is no I in team. So if we think about it that way, there is no I in the word church. Okay, there's a whole lot of people that make up the church. All right, so it's not just about I. Again, our first set of scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to start off by reading verses 1 through 7. Therefore I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to live worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. The Bible teaches that believers share a great responsibility for one another. So rather than approaching church for my spiritual needs alone, the gospel expands my value, my value system to include how I might support others too. How can I support others? Some of us think, hmm, how can I support others? A lot of people have more patience than I do. That's what the scripture says. Some people have more humility, gentleness. Some people know how to show love in a different way than what I do. I can have a quirky personality sometimes and um, maybe that comes from you know being around kids for as long as I was um, when you're a school teacher you kind of have to use everything that you can uh, everything but the kitchen sink so to, so to speak whenever you're trying to reach children well you know grown ups sometimes are a lot like that um, you have to use a lot of different tools to reach different people um, our church may not be able to reach someone that another church is able to reach for whatever reason. That's okay. God gave us all different gifts. He gave us all different abilities to be able to use. And he says that over and over again. The one thing that speaks to me is in verse 7 where it says, Now grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Aren't you thankful for grace? I know I am. Uh, through the years, you know, I know there's been a lot of times that I've stumbled, stumped my toe along the way, fallen down, so to speak. God's grace is always there, and God's grace is enough. Um, I think about um, right now, as a retired teacher, how can I support others? You know, there's a lot of things going on right now with our children, schools, um, I've been able to see some of my friends this summer and talk to them and one thing that I promised them and each one of us as a Christian can promise them and this is one of those things that we don't necessarily see um, but we feel it when other believers are praying for us and I personally think that's one of the biggest things that we can do um, I know there's a, a, a lady here in our church and she's really good at sending cards, little bitty tokens. You might find something sitting somewhere uh, that's got your name on it or might be close to where you normally see it. It might be a little bag sometimes. And that is such an amazing way of being supportive and encouraging to other people. 
So it's not necessarily the things that we see. Like I said earlier, it's not the preacher that you see up here. It's not necessarily the person that's doing the music. It's not your Sunday school teacher or whoever your leader is that, that you're with more. Um, we all have spiritual gifts um, that enable us to support one another. The Holy Spirit works through other believers to help and support us. God equips us to accomplish his work. And maybe I didn't say it, but whenever I was talking about my friends, I did promise them that I would pray for them. So I might not see them every day. I might not talk to them on the phone or text them or get an email from them. But I can pray for them every day. And that's something that you can do also. The lesson writer goes on to... Um, tell us that there's some ways that we can do that and it it references some of the fruits of the spirit in humility we should consider others in addition to ourselves with gentleness we should give others the benefit of the doubt through patience we should show others the mercy we've been shown from Jesus and in love we should forgive the faults of others knowing we have plenty of our own feelings that need to be forgiven. Humility, gentleness, patience, love. Not everybody can be strong in all these areas, but a lot of us can be strong, especially in one or two of those areas. And that's where we can show so much support to other Christians around us. Our next set of scripture comes from Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son, growing into maturity with a stature measured by Christ's fullness. No one comes out of the womb a ready-made worker in God's kingdom. No one is fully equipped to serve at the moment he trusts in Jesus. But when we come to faith in Christ, God gifts us in a specific way. And he uses the spiritual leaders he's placed in our lives to equip us to use those gifts. I know uh, years ago, and I mean years ago, whenever I was a whole lot younger, um, there was some classes that were offered for people that were new Christians. There were some classes that were offered just to help uh, <clears throat> teach and grow uh, younger Christians. I was probably in my 20s at the time. Um, like I said, it was a long time ago. Um, and those classes... Um, we're good. Sometimes we don't always want to acknowledge maybe that we need to um, have some guidance, um, be taught about more scripture, but the older I get, the more I learn. And, and I know I've heard my parents say this and I've had friends say this that are older and um, people that I've looked up to in church. Well, the older you get, the more you keep learning. And that's true. I don't think you're ever too old to learn something new, especially when it comes to God's Word, when it comes to uh, being a better Christian, when it comes to living a life closer um, to God. He is the ultimate um, person that we look up to, that we want to be like. When we all join together in the work of ministry, the entire body grows in maturity and looks more like Jesus. And I'm sure some of you all have heard that said as far as like, well, that church, man, they've just got all kinds of things going on and they've got this and this and this. And that, that does tend to happen, I think, whenever everybody is kind of on the same page. Um, you can see that in your workplace probably when everybody, everybody's got a, a goal in mind to achieve. Um, kids can see that when they're participating in a sporting team or event. 
whenever everybody's got the same goal or the same end for the race in mind, um, it just, it looks better. Things, um, things go better when everybody knows that they're on the same page and they've all got the same goal in mind. That goes back to how it says our focus point is God gives the church spiritual gifts to accomplish his work. Each one of us, it's like your human body. Each part of your body has a specific job to do. If you're having problems with your eyes or your ears, um, I know I fuss at my dad sometimes because he doesn't hear as well um, the older he gets. That's okay. Mom's there with him, and she's there to pick up on things maybe that he didn't catch. That's just like a, a member of a team, a member of the church. Just because one person doesn't necessarily have the gift to be able to get a certain task accomplished, there might be somebody else. The saying used to be that in the Baptist church, 20% uh, of the workers, 20% of the members were the ones that were doing 100% of the work. And that's not how God wants it to be. God wants everyone to use their spiritual gift for him. And I think that's whenever you see, um, you, or you might hear of, you know, certain churches and wonder, well, they've really got this going, they've really got that going. Well, maybe more of them are actually getting involved. We all have a role to play. And when we're all doing our roles, when we're all doing what God wants us to do, the support is there. The support is there for the minister to be able to lead like he needs to lead. The support is there for other people you know, to accomplish their jobs. Um, what's that saying? It's like a well-oiled machine. When everyone comes together and they, they do their job, they use their gift that God has given them. The last set of scripture that we have today comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Then we will no longer be little children, tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning with cleverness and the techniques of deceit. But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. From him, the whole body, fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament, promotes the growth of the body for building up itself in love by the proper working of each individual part. If we could just remember these words. And I think the last time I taught the lesson, we talked about um, how important it is to stay focused in our Bibles, to always look to the Word, to always look to Scripture, to what God said. Because when we look there and we look hard enough, He has the answer for every single problem, every single thing every single desire uh, for the church and how he wants the church to function, it's all there. It's just all there in the scripture. Verse 15 again says, But speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ. When you just take time just to think about what those words mean, it's pretty cool. The scripture says some believers are gifted in leadership roles. Others are gifted to demonstrate greater acts of mercy, service, and generosity. While others have a greater inner sense of faith, wisdom, and discernment. Regardless of whatever um, gift God has given you, he has given all spiritual gifts to build up the body of Christ. Under the direction of his word and the power of his Holy Spirit, we in the body of Christ work together to accomplish his work. The lesson writer gives a, a list of spiritual gifts, prophecy, serving, teaching, giving, mercy, ruling, and they say provide leadership. 
and exhortation. In other words, encourage others' faith. I don't know which one of those roles you have. I know that sometimes through our lives, we take on different roles in the church. I think as you grow, God will enable you to have more roles that you can um, fulfill. I just know that through this scripture, God's telling us that whenever we take the time to learn what our role is as a Christian and in serving our church, whatever church that is that you happen to be a member of or that you go to, if you allow him to, and if you ask him to, and I think that's important also, we have to ask God to show us what our gifts are. But when he shows us, um, he will give us the wisdom, he will give us the knowledge, he will give us the strength and the courage to do whatever um, act or um, teaching, whatever it is, whatever role that he wants us to fulfill. That when we pray and we read the scripture, that God will guide us and he will always direct our paths in the way that will be most pleasing unto him. Whenever I um, was preparing this lesson, um, one of the things that, that I alluded to earlier was um, being a retired teacher and reaching out to my uh, friends that are still at school. And I just wanted us to take a minute today um, before we uh, finish this lesson to think about who we need to be praying for as school gets ready to start. We here at Southside have a whole bunch of teachers um, that need prayer and support. Our students, and that doesn't necessarily, sometimes we just focus on the older kids. Um, our young kids need just as much support as what our older students need. I have two grandchildren and uh, things have been crazy for them through all of this virus and health crisis that we've been experiencing. The little ones need it, um, that too because they even pick up on things that are not right. So whether it be that you have younger grand grandchildren, children, um, whether your kids are in high school, middle school, just regular elementary school, think about ways maybe that you could help that teacher Think about ways that there are people in your local church that you could help reach out to them. Maybe a card of encouragement just to let them know that you're thinking of them. You know that things are different than it's ever been. Um, we have a wonderful preschool here at our church. Um, I've been um, praying for them, thinking of things maybe that I could do to help make this easier for them. How could you do something like that? Maybe you also have grandchildren here, or you, ha you just know somebody that their child is coming and you wanna reach out and do something special for them. It's gonna be really hard, and, and I guess that's why I wanted to make sure I included this today uh, as part of the lesson. Not only do the staff and the kids need encouragement and support, but the parents, uh, I know I've seen a lot of my friends uh, that are parents that still have kids in school. You know, well, what are you going to do for your kids? Which, which method are you going to choose? Are you going to let your kids go to school? Are you going to let your kids do virtual school at home? Are you going to do 50-50? You know, what's going to be best? What's going to be best for my kids that want to play sports? How am I going to let them do that? Again, pray for those parents. You know, be an encourager. You don't have to have the answer. I don't think anybody's looking for that right now. But sometimes all you need to do is say, I'm praying for you. And you might not make the same decision as your friends or your parents that have other kids that you're 
you know, that everybody's friends with, that might not be the best situation for all of y'all. But just be an encouragement. Um, be there to support people with their decisions. We don't always have to be the judge to say, oh, well, they, they made the wrong choice. They should have done this. That's not what people are needing right now. That's not what God's word says. We need to be a support and encouragement system. Um, and then you think of any other way that the church can reach out and meet a need. And you know, Southside is good about trying to help people whenever they can. There's other um, places, there's other organizations that are good at meeting needs. Don't ever be afraid to ask for help. Um, there's no shame in having to reach out and ask somebody for some help. People want to be helpful. Um, people need to be helpful. Um, I like to think that I can help my friends in any way if they were to call. So, you know, think of those things that you can do to be a support system for those around you, for your neighbor. You know, um, sometimes it's just a little thing, like I said earlier, a card in the mail, the fact that you pray for someone and they don't even know that you're praying for them. That is pretty powerful because especially in times of sickness, we, we know that people pray for us. But how about if we just do that just because? Just because God wants us to use those fruits of the Spirit. I can't do all of them as well as I can do some, but just think about the few that were mentioned. Humility, gentleness, patience, love. If we all just do a little bit, how much better, how much better this world might be. Think of those things this week as you try to live, live it out. Use your spiritual gifts to grow, to unify, and to love Christ's church. Let's end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Again, we thank you for the time that we've had to look at your scripture. Lord, we're just blessed again. We're blessed and we're thankful for this church. And Lord, we're thankful for the people that are watching and um, Lord, that support other people, that show support to other people maybe that we don't know about. That's okay. You, you didn't tell us that we have to be seen whenever we do everything that we do. But Lord, we do know that like you said in your word, the church does work better whenever we all use our gifts, whenever we all come together and we're all working towards one goal. And that is to increase your kingdom, Lord, to see others saved and come to Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us. We ask you to be with those people, Lord, that are experiencing health issues, surgery that's upcoming, Lord, that are recovering from surgery. Um, and Lord, for those that just have unspoken needs, Lord, because um, most people have things that they don't necessarily want to say out loud. But we ask you, Lord, to just be with those needs in a special way. Again, we thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us, and we hope and pray that this lesson reaches out and touches someone, and that, Lord, that today is a good day for everyone. Thank you again, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. In Jesus' precious name, I pray all these things. Amen.